Normally when we make videos about Medicare Advantage or Medicare supplement plans, we get two very different types of comments. The first is that we love Medicare Advantage plans because they pay us the most money. The second is very different and it is that we hate Medicare Advantage because they do not pay us enough. Combine this with news articles saying brokers are paid to push Medicare Advantage plans and you receiving constant phone calls with people trying to sell you Medicare Advantage coverage. Joe Namath here and like you. It is hard to know what is true and what isn't. So do insurance agents actually get paid more to try to pressure you to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan? Well, we will answer that question and more in today's video. But first, like always, all we ask is that you like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss future uploads. When we use the term insurance broker or insurance agent, we are talking about independent contractors like ourselves who represent multiple insurance companies offering Medicare Supplement, Medicare Advantage, and Part D prescription drug plans. This means that as brokers, we are not employees of Medicare or the federal government or any specific insurance company. Instead, we work independently to provide you with a variety of options to suit your Medicare needs. A typical broker in the Medicare space will contract with several or dozens of different insurance companies, which allows us to offer a wide range of Medicare Advantage plans, Medigap plans, and much more. At Giardini Medicare, our agency is licensed in about 13 different states. We also have other friends in the industry who are licensed in just about every state that we are not licensed in, ensuring that someone will be able to help you with your transition to Medicare, no matter where you're located. To connect with us, you can visit our website at gmedicareteam.com, where you can schedule a call, or alternatively, you can visit doineedmedicare.com to access our comprehensive list of Medicare resources designed to help you understand your Medicare options. Overall, insurance brokers specializing in Medicare are very similar to insurance agents that you might encounter when it comes to home, auto, or life insurance. Just like in those fields, our goal is to provide you with independent advice to find the right coverage. Discussing how brokers are paid is often treated as a pretty taboo topic. Can't talk about that, remember? But we think it is crucial for you, the consumer, to understand exactly how we earn a living. After all, when somebody is selling you something, it is totally natural to wonder what's in it for them. First, it's important to know that we do not receive commissions or any form of payment for enrolling you in Original Medicare Part A and Part B. We also do not get paid for helping you understand the Medicare system, assisting with IRMA appeals, and many other services we often provide. We also get paid very little for making YouTube videos, and in fact, I would say none of the videos that you see from us or other brokers would even exist if we were not getting commissions from actually enrolling people in Medigap or Medicare Advantage plans. And overall, generally the only way we do earn money or commission is by directly enrolling you in Medicare Advantage or Medigap and Part D coverage. Additionally, we can of course receive commissions if we enroll you in other insurance products like cancer insurance, life insurance, hospital indemnity plans, dental, and more. But those are topics for future videos. It is essential to understand that the commission that we earn does not come out of your pocket. You keep your money, I'll keep my job. And, uh, well. Whether you use an independent broker to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan or a Medigap plan, you will almost always pay the same premium and receive the same coverage as if you were to enroll with that insurance company directly. Now we say almost always, since for the sake of transparency, we should mention that there are a few Medigap plans out there that will offer premium discounts of about 5% if you do not use a broker, and instead apply directly using the company's website. However, in this video, we will not name those companies who offer these discounts, since we believe that the value we provide, it far exceeds that discount, and we don't feel these companies should be rewarded for attempting to exclude brokers from the process of helping consumers. Finally, it's important to note that our discussion in this video only applies to independent brokers and smaller agencies like ourselves. It does not apply to ship counselors who are often volunteers and do not receive compensation, or 1-800-MEDICARE employees, or even employees that work directly for insurance companies. Now let's examine the details of the commissions that brokers earn for selling Medicare Advantage and Medigap plans. We will focus first on Medicare Advantage plans. 
As a quick reminder, Medicare Advantage plans, they are alternatives to original Medicare offered by private insurance companies. They are very different from Medicare supplements as we have discussed many times in previous videos. Each year, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, more commonly known as just Medicare, they release guidelines for Medicare Advantage commissions that brokers receive. These guidelines, they set the fair market value, or FMV for short, which is the upper limit for the yearly commission a broker can receive for selling a Medicare Advantage plan. Although Medicare sets the fair market value, it does not mean insurance companies are required to pay this full amount. For instance, the FMV for 2025 is currently set at $626 for new enrollments in most states, as you can see here. But an insurance company could choose to pay brokers $550 instead if they wanted to. However, most Medicare Advantage insurance companies today do pay the full FMB that is set by Medicare to stay competitive with one another. So for today's discussion, we will assume each company is paying that maximum amount. As you may have already noticed, Medicare sets higher commission limits in certain states. For example, in 2025, Brokers in Connecticut, Pennsylvania, and DC can earn up to $705 to enroll someone in a Medicare Advantage plan, and most notably, brokers in New Jersey and California can earn up to $780 enrolling someone in a Medicare Advantage plan. This is significantly higher than in most states. Now, when we look at the commissions for Medicare Advantage plans, you may have already noticed that they are divided into two main categories. We have initial and renewal. As brokers, we receive an initial commission when you enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan for the first time. This applies if you are new to Medicare because you just turned 65 or retired and started Part A and Part B for the first time, or if you had a Medicare supplement plan and Part D coverage for years and now you're switching to Medicare Advantage again for the first time. In these scenarios, we would earn the initial commission amount. Again, in 2025, in most states, the initial Medicare Advantage commission amount is $626 for the year. However, it is worth noting that if you switch from Medigap and Part D to Medicare Advantage, during the calendar year, our initial commissions are prorated based on the number of months remaining in the year. On the other hand, if instead you were already enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan, and then you come to us to switch to a different Medicare Advantage plan, we receive the lower renewal commission amount instead of that higher initial amount. In most states in 2025, this is set at $313 for the year. It's very important to know also that whenever we enroll you in a Medicare Advantage plan, we continue to receive renewal commissions for as long as you stay enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan with us as your broker. This applies even if we help you change from one Medicare Advantage plan to another. Over time, these renewal commissions form the majority of the commissions that brokers earn. Lastly, renewal commission amounts, they do change from year to year, while they don't always increase, they have consistently risen over the last several years. So for this video, we will assume that renewal commissions will continue to increase year over year. Historical data shows an average growth of 4.37% per year in renewal commissions since 2015. We will use this growth rate to project renewal commissions going forward, which will be important when we later compare directly Medicare Advantage and Medigap commissions. To better understand the difference in the Medicare Advantage commissions for the initial and the renewal enrollments, let's briefly go over two examples. Suppose you come to us for help when you turn 65. Then, after comparing Medicare Advantage and Medigap options, you decide to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan. In Michigan, we would receive $626 as a first year commission as we discussed. If you stay with that same plan for 2025 and two more years in 2026 and 2027, we will continue to earn renewal commissions in addition to the initial $626. Based on our projections, these renewal commissions might be $327 in 2026 and $341 in 2027. 
These are estimates, but they do give you an idea of the overall commission structure over time. If you later decide to switch to a different Medicare Advantage plan with another insurance company after those three years, and we enroll you in that new plan, we will still continue to receive those renewal commissions from the new plan as long as you remain enrolled. In this case, in year four of you being our Medicare Advantage client, we might earn $356 for that year and so on and so forth. For comparison, if instead you initially enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan directly through an insurance company at age 65, and then you come to us in 2025 to switch to a different Medicare Advantage plan, if we enroll you in the new plan, we would receive the renewal commission amount at that time, not the higher initial commission. In this scenario, we would earn $313 for the year in 2025, and then just like in our previous example, we would continue to earn increasing renewal commissions for each year you remain enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan and we remain your broker. Overall, this highlights that brokers do not always receive the higher initial commission amounts that are shown on charts and headlines. Now we need to shift our thinking since commissions for Medicare Supplement and Part D plans they are quite different from Medicare Advantage commissions that we just discussed. Often, Medigap commissions are based on a percentage of the plan's premium that you pay. Importantly, this commission, again, it does not come out of your pocket. It is paid to brokers by the insurance company providing your Medigap plan. Unlike with Medicare Advantage commissions, Medigap commissions, they are not standardized as Medicare does not publish fair market values for these commissions. Instead, individual insurance companies, they set their own commission rates based on what they feel is competitive and affordable. Some Medigap companies, they even just pay a flat rate of a commission regardless of the monthly premiums that you pay. Additionally, Medigap commission amounts, they can vary significantly from one state to the next. We will of course provide examples of a few states, but it is impossible to cover all of the different commission structures for every state in just one video. In addition to commissions from Medigap plans, brokers do often receive commissions for enrolling clients in Medicare Part D coverage. This is usually, of course, purchased in addition to your Medigap coverage. However, it is important to know that not all Part D plans allow brokers to contract with them, and some Part D plans that we can contract with still do not pay any commission. This trend of reducing or eliminating broker commissions for Part D plans, it does seem to be increasing, partly due to financial pressures from the Inflation Reduction Act that we have talked about in previous videos. However, to keep things fair, we will assume in this video that we are getting Part D commissions if we enroll you in a Medigap plan. Similar to Medicare Advantage plans, Medicare does set the fair market value of her Part D commissions annually. For 2025, the initial commission for someone enrolling in a Part D plan for the first time is set at $109 for the year. However, renewal commissions are of course lower and set at $55. Analyzing historical data again, we calculated that the average annual increase in Part D renewal commissions going back to 2015 has been 6.98% growth per year. We will use that growth rate to project Part D commissions over time in our examples. Before we compare Medicare Advantage commissions to Medigap and Part D commissions to determine once and for all which one pays brokers more, let's look at two specific examples of how we as brokers earn commissions when enrolling you in a Medigap and Part D plan. Let's consider a 65-year-old in Michigan in the 48116 zip code. Suppose the monthly premium for a Medigap Plan G in this zip code is $129 per month. With insurance company A in Michigan, the commission for this plan that we would receive for the first year is 29% of that monthly premium. This roughly translates to $37 per month or about $449 for the year in commission. Additionally, if you do enroll in Part D coverage for the first time in 2025 to go with that plan, we would earn an extra $109 for the year, bringing the combined total commission for the Medigap Plan G and Part D to $558 for the year. Now you might think that this would cause brokers to push consumers towards Medigap plans with higher premiums to maximize our commissions, but just like with Medicare Advantage plans, 
Brokers also earn renewal commissions for each year that you remain enrolled in the Medigap plan. For company A, you can see that we would earn 29% or $449 per year for the first three years, and then 4.5% of your initial $129 monthly premium from the fourth year onward. This would roughly amount to $70 per year, years four plus. So if we were short-sighted and we just enrolled you in a more expensive plan for a slightly higher commission, you might switch to a cheaper plan with another broker in the future, causing us to lose out on all of those future renewal commissions. Therefore, we are still incentivized to enroll you in a competitively priced Medigap plan that you will be happy with for many years. As we mentioned, Medigap commissions do vary by state. For example, in Texas, the same company pays a commission of 22% of the initial plan premium for years one through seven instead and then they pay 2.5% of that premium for all of the years thereafter. Lastly, if you decide to switch to a different Medigap plan and you can qualify based on your health, brokers essentially start back at year one for their commissions with the new company. So if we are collecting the 4.5% commission in year four in Michigan, and then you change to a new Medigap company, we could start earning 29% again or whatever the amount the new company offers for year one. This is exactly why brokers often encourage you to shop and change your Medigap coverage every few years if you can qualify for a new plan. It helps us earn more commissions, but it's not for strictly selfish reasons since changing Medigap plans every so often will also likely save you money on monthly premiums since newer plans are often cheaper. Now let's briefly compare the Medigap commissions from company A to those with company B, which pays a fixed commission amount regardless of your plan's premiums. For example, company B pays brokers $400 in the first year if you enroll in a plan G. Then we would earn an additional $109 for enrolling you in a Part D plan for the first time. This would total $509 for the first year commission. The renewal commissions for company B, they remain at fixed amounts and they do decrease over time as you can see here. Again, this shows how Medigap commissions can be highly variable. We also often receive lower commissions for selling Medigap plan N compared to plan G, which we will show shortly. Overall, if you're concerned with whether or not the broker that you're speaking with is recommending a Medigap plan just because of the different commissions, we highly recommend you simply ask them, how much do you get paid for these different Medigap options? How much are you being paid? Luckily, we truly do not think that most brokers will consider the different commission levels when recommending different plans. Enough waiting, let's answer the question that we posed at the beginning of the video. Do brokers get paid more for selling Medicare Advantage or Medicare Supplement plans? In reality, we could spin this answer to fit whichever narrative that we would like. For example, if we enroll a 65-year-old who is new to Medicare into a Medicare Advantage plan for the first time, we would again earn $626 for the year. In contrast, enrolling that same person in a Medigap Plan G with a standalone Part D plan would yield approximately $558 using the company A rates from earlier or $509 using company B. That difference would of course be even greater if that same person did not enroll in a Part D plan that pays us a commission. Using that example, it is really easy to say, see, I knew it, brokers, they're greedy and they're just pushing Medicare Advantage plans to earn more money. I know it, I know it, I know it. However, the narrative changes if we consider a different scenario. Consider a 75-year-old who is currently enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan, and they are generally happy with it, but they're seeking to explore other options and trying to get help. In this case, a Medigap Plan G in the same Michigan zip code as earlier, 48116, it might have a monthly premium of about $166 per month. So with this plan with company A, we would earn 29% of the premium or $577 for the year. Adding Part D coverage would increase the commissions by up to $109, possibly totaling $686 for the year. If we helped this same 75-year-old enroll in a different Medicare Advantage plan instead of switching them to a Medigap Plan G, 
we would receive the lower renewal commission of $313 for the year, less than half of the commission for selling the Medigap Plan G and Part D in this scenario. Now I know what you're thinking, quit beating around the bush and just tell us which option pays brokers the most. Okay, I think it's pretty fair to objectively say that over time, Medicare Advantage plans, they do in fact pay brokers the most money. Although this conclusion again is based on a long-term view. To show this, let's look at examples from various states over many years, showing the cumulative commission that brokers earn for selling Medicare Advantage versus Medigap plans. For these different examples, we will assume that we receive the full initial Medicare Advantage commission amount and that we earn the increasing renewal commission amounts based on the 4.37% yearly increase we calculated before. For Medigap plans, we will account for the changing commission amounts over the years for both company A and company B, as well as the 6.98% yearly increase in Part D commissions. First, imagine a 65-year-old enrolling in Medicare for the first time in Michigan. Here, we can see cumulative commissions over 20 years if that person enrolls in a Medicare Advantage plan, a Medigap Plan G with Company A, or a Medigap Plan G with Company B, with both of those also having Part D coverage. In this case, Medicare Advantage has the highest commission in year one like we would expect, but both Medigap plans with company A and company B would yield higher cumulative commissions by the end of year two. The plan G with company B would actually continue to provide higher commissions compared to the Medicare Advantage plan all the way up until year seven. Beyond that, Medicare Advantage would pay significantly more as you can see. For comparison, let's look at commissions for Medicare Advantage enrollment versus Medigap Plan N and Part D coverage. Plan N with Company A provides more commission than Medicare Advantage until year four. However, Plan N with Company B offers lower Plan N commissions, so we would never earn more from Company B in this scenario compared to a Medicare Advantage plan. Lastly, what if we wanted to do a projection trying to maximize the Medigap commissions that we could earn? Consider a scenario where we enroll someone in a Medigap Plan G at age 65 along with Part D coverage, and then every five years they can qualify for a new Medigap Plan G based on their health, and we switch them to a new Medigap Plan G with a new company. Over 20 years, in this case, the cumulative commissions for Plan G would be just about in line with Medicare Advantage commissions, if not slightly lower. Now looking long-term at commissions in Texas, a 65-year-old enrolling in a Plan G with either Company A or Company B and Part D coverage versus a Medicare Advantage plan shows that Medicare Advantage typically yields higher commissions compared to what we saw in Michigan. However, the difference is they're fairly close until about after five years, when Medicare Advantage plans clearly pull ahead for the rest of the remaining time. Again, when we add Plan N commissions from Company A and B to this graph, we can see that it falls short of both the Plan G and the Medicare Advantage commissions. Also, if we use the example of somebody changing Medigap plans every five years in Texas, we would earn just slightly lower commissions over time compared to Medicare Advantage. Finally, in New Jersey, where Medicare Advantage commissions are the highest in the country, it's not surprising that if we look at Medicare Advantage commissions over time compared to Medigap commissions from Company A and Company B, as well as with Part D, the money we would earn from Medicare Advantage almost always comes out ahead. This includes if we add the commissions with Plan N enrollments and even the scenario where Medigap plans are changed every five years. Keep in mind that there are many different scenarios that we could use to show the commission differences between Medigap and Medicare Advantage plans. We could look at what happens if commissions don't increase as much over time, or what if we don't get paid commissions for Part D? But at the end of the day, we wanted to make this video using some of the most realistic examples possible. Ultimately, the most important thing for us as brokers is to help you find a plan that meets your needs and one that you're happy with for the long term. While it might seem that brokers push Medicare Advantage plans for higher initial commissions, if you are unhappy with that plan and then you switch plans within a year or even a few months, 
we lose out on thousands of dollars in potential renewal commissions. So although we may get paid more for enrolling you in a Medicare Advantage plan, that is not why we choose to sell them.